the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring a celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you a life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And they'd like to mention the fact that their product, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. What's the wonderful thing about America is that the newspapers they got here. They got a plain paper, sport the paper, trade the paper, fire in the paper. And yesterday I saw what must be a railroad paper. Is it called the best bets at the track? <laughs> Come in, Mama Mia, I'm never going to sleep at the night without reading the paper. But there's a funny thing about the newspaper here. You start to read the story on a page or two. Then as just the one as they get interesting, they say, turn it to page 48. <laughs> and then I'm going to turn to page 48, but the meanwhile, I'm going to read nice advertisement on the page 6. Then a funny story on the page 10. Cross the word of puzzle on the page 20, beautiful girl in a bed in a suit on the page 36. And by the time I'm going to come to page 48, I'm going to know what I'm going to do there. <laughs> but now, Mamma Mia, I'm... I'm going to get a big, big surprise for you. Today I'm going to get a $2 check from my neighborhood newspaper. Yeah, that's right. They got the one department that's called My Face Was Red. And if you send them in something that's funny, that embarrasses you, then they send you $2. So I'm going to wrote them how I'm going to come off the boat three years ago, how I'm across the street in a big traffic, at least many years ago, back, I think he means it to Italy, so I'm running to hide myself in a cellar. <laughs> <laughs> and for this, Mamma Mia, newspaper is sending me $2. Oh, wait, Mamma Mia, here comes my countryman, Pasquale. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, 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 Pasquale. <laughs> I was just reading the paper, little banana nose. <laughs> you see anything inside the Pasquale? Yes, the set to the cabbage you push is the name. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey, look, you see my check, Pasquale? For that story, paper is sending me two dollars. Eh, hey, two dollars? Yeah. Luigi, let's celebrate right away by spending the $2 on the biggest investment you ever made. What's that? Marriage license for my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pasquale, that investment is a 250 pounds or too big. How am I going to spend the $2 this some other way? Impossible. In America, two bucks is only good for two things. A marriage license or a bet on a horse. <laughs> Pasquale... With a rusty, they bought the same thing. <laughs> Don't talk that way, Luigi. Look, you like to read your name in the papers, right? Sure. All right. You marry Rosa, I promise you, I'm going to pay to print your name on a whole page of Chicago's the biggest of paper. Even put a pictures of you and a Rosa inside. Yeah, but Pasquale, just for us is a picture, you're going to need the whole Sunday magazine section. <laughs> <laughs> and the front of the pages are going to be Rosa's face, and as are going to say, for the rest of Rosa, turn to page of two, three, five, six, seven. <laughs> Look, wiseacres. Anybody can get his name in the paper. All you got to do is a fall off a building. Yeah, but... Pasquale, don't forget that. I'm got to pay the money for writing it for the paper. You got to pay the money. Ho, ho. Luigi, if you're going to tell all those stupid things you did when you first come to America, you're going to be a millionaire. 
Why don't you tell him the dumb thing he said to me about the names of the streets? Yeah, eh? Pasquale. Pasquale, America is so nice. Yeah. But why all the streets are they called the stop a street and a go street? <laughs> <laughs> I was a new here. Oh, I was just stop. He home. was a new. Tell him what he said when I wanted to buy you first the hot dog. Pasquale, it must have been bad times in America for they eating the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Pasquale, you was to come here to congratulate me or to make fun of me. What a dumb bell. Luigi, how many times I got to teach you? When you do something stupid, keep it to yourself. Look at me. If I ever do a stupid thing, I never open up my mouth, and it stays right to where it belongs, in my head. <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. Since I'm an on you, you always have been a stupid in the head. <laughs> a funny thing. When I'm a say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> Well, you excuse me now, Pasquale. I I'm going to write a few more things for my paper. Sure, oh, sure. Go ahead. Tell everybody what a dumb things you did. You're going to be a millionaire in no time. Pasquale, always you make fun of when I'm going to try to improve myself in America. Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you I can get the money for writing other things. All right, all right. Show me. But no matter what you write, I bet you're going to end up with your own column. And you know what it's going to be called? What? Stupid things I'm done by the maroon of the week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't no, so, so worry about it. We're going to work the whole thing. Attention, class. <laughs> Please, I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here, Mr. Howard. Here. Mr. Olson. Hey, yeah. Mr. Schultz. You can say that again. Mr. Schultz. <laughs> Thank you, you did say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> Class, our lesson today is on English. We are studying the degrees of comparison. Mr. Horowitz, compare the word good. With pleasure. Good, better, best. Excellent. Thank you, I'm glad you agree with me. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Mr. Schultz, compare the word bad. Bad? Very thick debt. <laughs> no, no. And Dimey Spalding Benazillin couldn't save him. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Uh, Miss Spalding, I know. I know the answer. There he goes. The vulture of intelligence feeding on the bones of ignorance. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Uh, hold it, Mr. Olson. Mr. Basco, you may compare the word bad. Huh? I said compare the word bad. Haven't you been listening? Oh, sure. Uh, bad, worse. Good. Bad, worse, so good. <laughs> no, no, I said good to you. I know, and if you said it's got to be right. <laughs> Please listen, Mr. Basco. Good is not correct. Mr. Spalding, if you tell me the wrong thing, how am I going to get the good marks? Oh, stop already, Luigi. You're getting teacher. All for shimmer. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Spalding, uh, maybe, maybe it's all my fault. I'm, I'm so excited about it. When the two dollars are from the newspaper, I, I didn't listen to you too good before. You won two dollars from the newspaper? Yeah. Oh, did you do that? By him, is it? Well, I'm... I'm a son of paper story why my face was red, and they sent me the money. Why your face was red? Him and Luigi, don't tell me you are an Italian Indian. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, look, friends. Look, here's the check, you see? <laughs> see? And my name is in the paper today on a page of 12 or 6 lines up from the bottom or 2 inches from the right. Yeah, but you ain't sure exactly where, huh? <laughs> Let me see that, Luigi. <laughs> ah, look, the little Wiener Schnitzel is right. Why my face was red. And there's a name I on the bottom, Biggest Life. Luigi Bat. Here, 21 and North the Hollister Street. Now you see why I'm so excited, Miss Polly. <laughs> well, I can't say that I blame you, Mr. Basco. Oh, may I see that paper, please? I'm interested in finding out how you phrase your writing. Maybe we could point out some mistakes in English. At two dollars a mistake, I could be a millionaire in a week. <laughs> <laughs> this is not bad, Mr. Basco. Oh, but you should watch your personal pronoun. You keep writing I'm instead of I. Well, I don't worry. I'm a watch. I watch. I'm a watch. <laughs> Again, I watch. I watch. Himmel, sounds like we got it a sponsor, the Hamilton Watch Company. <laughs> 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 
Miss Bowling, ain't it wonderful? Luigi getting his name in the paper like that? Yes, it certainly is, Mr. Basco, and we're all very proud of it. Oh, uh, thank you, Frank. You should keep on writing to them, Luigi. Your uh, that's true. If, if your story amused the newspaper, you should send them a few more. Oh, Frenzy, you don't know what your words mean to me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like to, more than anything else, to show Pasquale how wrong he is. You think, you, you think maybe, maybe I'm going to get a worker for this paper? A, a steady worker, huh? Well, that's not so easy, Mr. Basco. But in America, anything is possible. Luigi, if you could show this newspaper that you do a better job than anybody else, it could be they would hire you. Your heart is that's true, by golly. Uh, all, all you must prove to them is that you have a good nose for news. Good nose for news. Yeah, that's when a fella needs a schmeller. <laughs> Why, <laughs> Luigi, it's time you left that scheming Pasquale and quit the antique business and tried a new life. Yeah, but, friends, how do you think I'm sure to go back to getting a job on this paper? Well, it's only a suggestion, Mr. Basco, but as long as it's a local newspaper, I'd suggest you canvas the whole neighborhood for human interest stories. Then bring them in to the editor and show him what you can do before you even see him. A very smart idea. There's somebody always getting engaged, get married, having a baby. Now, and if you ever find anybody doing all that in one day, then you really got news. <laughs> <laughs> hey, friends, friends, I think you give me a big idea. Yeah, you give me a great idea. I'm, I'm going to go around all day tomorrow, talk to all of my friends in the neighborhood, and... And find out all of the news. Oh, sure, there's nothing like tying, I say. Yeah, and you can start the news with me, Luigi. Mrs. Schultz had it a seven and a half pound boy. Oh, that's oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful. That's so wonderful. How about a shirt second? When did this happen? Seven years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> I smile, everybody. And just think, Luigi, tomorrow you're getting news about the neighborhood. Next year, you're working for a big city paper. And in two years, who knows? You find a crazy hat, you go around wearing it, and what does everybody say? Luigi Basco is the head of hopper of Chicago. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll make your working hours more enjoyable. From time to time, while you're working, chew a stick of refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You see, friends, when you're concentrating on a job, there are bound to be times when you feel a little tense or restless. Chewing a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint really helps you out. A good, smooth chewing gives you satisfaction and helps to relieve that feeling of tension. Then, too, the refreshing Wrigley Spearmint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, and gives you a little lift. You just naturally feel better and work better. So enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint gum while you work. Millions find it helpful, and you will, too. Let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, since I'm a one or two dollars, I've got a big ambition to work for newspaper. Right now in America, biggest reporter is Walter Winchella, who's a writer very nice, but nobody is understanding him. <laughs> for instance, yesterday he's a writer, Mary X has a proof to with a John, with a John H, and before she splices with a you-know-who, expect an innovation by 30 time. <laughs> Mamma mia, this is kind of English you can't learn, you got to be born with it. <laughs> Still, even if I'm never going to be big like a Mr. Winchell, I'm going to take my friend's advice and talk to all the people in my neighborhood. Then I'm going to take all this news to the newspaper fella, and maybe he's going to give me a job. My first customer was the Pasquale. Hello, Pasquale. What's the new today? Huh? What's the idea of a pencil and a notebook? Pasquale, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to be newspaper man without writing the stupid things about myself. 
I'm going to get all the news about the neighborhood and maybe I'm going to get a steady job. And then I'm going to have to be in a shelter by you. You know, Luigi, I think you got some seeds missing and you pumpkin ahead. <laughs> If I didn't know you didn't drink, I'd have sent you away to that Alcoholics Unanimous. <laughs> but why, why you talk to me like this? Because enough is enough. Just because of some crazy newspaper gives you two bucks, so right away you think you're a big reporter. Luigi, if you were a reporter, then I'm ex Xavier Kugatz. <laughs> well, I'd like to go by ex Xavier Kugatz. Now, wait, wait. Look, Luigi, you're too old to be playing a kid games. Instead of walking around the streets of Pester and all the neighbors, you should have sit home and make your own news. Make my own news, sir? How, Pasquale? Get a married. That's the news. <laughs> Have some babies. That's the news. Do those things if you want to be in the headlines. Pasquale, there must be some easier way to get in the Pester. Come here, my son. Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> Wait, I'm coming over to see you. Hey, Luigi. Hey, what's this with the notebook and the pencil? I'm a reporter now, Astra. Eh? Yeah, didn't you see my name in the paper yesterday? No, what happened? You got hit by a taxi? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm a sold them a story. Oh, great. How much did they pay for the story? Uh, two dollars uh, was a short the story. <laughs> yeah, but don't worry. They're going to pay me more later. Astra, maybe, maybe you got a news for my paper? Big news, Luigi. My wife is expecting a baby next month. Oh, that's, that's the news, Astra. What day are babies going to come? Well, I didn't ask him, Luigi, but uh, it should be around the 15th. Please, Astra, I'm going to know exactly because I'm going to tell a paper night before. Well, now look, Luigi. <laughs> as soon as it happens, I promise you, you'll be the first to know. Oh, no, no, no. I want you should have tell Mrs. Astra first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Luigi, my big girl tells me you got your name on a newspaper. And only six pages away from President Truman. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all right. And now I'm big reporter for the paper, Mrs. Pellegrino. See, look, pepper, pencil, everything. Ah, Luigi, I'm always a new someday you're going to be a bigger shot, sir. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, Pasquale, <laughs> Pasquale, he's the only thing, son. Ah, that a Pasquale. 26 years in America, and he only got his name on the newspapers once. When he ate his own spaghetti, they took him to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> this is a peregrine. I'm, I'm a collecting a news from the whole in the neighborhood. Maybe you got something to tell me? Oh, sure, Luigi. I'm a making a party. My twins, they're going to be two years old tomorrow. Oh, that's, that's the news. Wait, wait, I'm going to write down it. Mrs. Pellegrino's a twins. Uh, how many L's in a Pellegrino? Well, uh, I'm a think three or four, but to make sure, put down a five, huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, uh, the twins, uh, they name uh, Vincent and Frank, huh? What do you think? I'm going to change them every year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, thank you, Mrs. Pellegrino. Are you going to be reading this uh, tomorrow? All right, Luigi, and I'm going to buy ten papers, so maybe they're going to give you a raise. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So now you're a reporter for the paper, eh, Luigi? <laughs> sure, Clancy. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe you got some police news for my paper? Well, Luigi, you could write down that I start my two-week vacation tomorrow. How good? Where are you going, Clancy? Well, I've been thinking. I could stay with my son and kids in Milwaukee or my daughter at Springfield, but either one would be mad if I go to the other. My cousins have invited us to New York, and there's a refresher course I could take at the academy, but my wife says we ought to pack up and go on a fishing trip. Mamma mia, you're so tired of thinking, or maybe you should just stay home and take a rest. Well, there's a newspaper place. Sign in the window says the neighborhood is found net the circulation of 10,000. Mamma mia, that's a big enough. Well, I'm going in with my news. 
Pardon me, miss. Uh, yes, sir? I'm a Luigi Bosco, fellow who's wrote the new paper yesterday. You recognize me? Uh, you wrote in our paper. Huh? Sure, my face was red. Here's the two dollar check to prove, you see? Uh, is there something wrong with the check, sir? Oh, no, it's beautiful. It's the first check I've ever made from a writing. So I'm going to frame it and hang it up next to my citizen as a paper so when I'm a get in a couple of years. Well, that's very nice, Mr. Vasco. And now I'm going to come in with a more business for you, Pepper. Here, in this notebook, I'm going to get lots of news for tomorrow's paper, and, and you're going to pay me now. Well, I'm sorry. All right, then not now. Pay me after you sell all the papers. <laughs> all I'm going to... Check on that you story. Find out where the devil chick is and tell Bill to search the morgue for a good snap of Rocky Malone. Such a mark. I'm a don't know if I'm going to like this job. Listen, miss, I'm a like to talk to you, boss. I'm sorry, Mr. Basco, but Mr. McGarry is very busy right now. Please, only for one minute. No, I... I'm a got some very big news for him. You have? Well, why didn't you say so? Just walk right in, Mr. Basco. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Already they treated me like a boss. Yes? Yeah. Uh, Mr. McGarry, I'm, I'm Luigi Basco, remember? My face was red for two dollars a year today. Excuse me. <laughs> Janet, see if you can get a line through now to the mayor's office. Tell Bill to shoot up that picture as soon as he picks it up at the morgue. Yes? I'm a Luigi Basco from the morgue. <laughs> oh, I, I, I mean, my pencil was red yesterday. You was sending me two dollars. See, look, I clip out uh, the... Yes, yes, thing yes. Right come there. to the point, Basco. I've got a load of work to get out. Well, I'm... I'm a got some big news about the neighborhood. Good. I'm always glad to get something hot. Mm, then maybe I'd better go out to warm up with the papers. <laughs> all right, all right. What's the news? Well... Well, I, I'm going to read. Astro's wife is going to have a baby. Boy or girl, we don't know. Mrs. Pellegrino's twins are going to be two years old. Clancy the cop is going on a vacation for two weeks. And maybe he's spending with his son in Milwaukee. And maybe Pastor, are you pulling my leg? Pulling your leg? You heard me. Please, my hands are they bought over the table, see? <laughs> Look, Basco, I appreciate you coming in and all that, but we can't use that stuff. It's no good for us. Ah. Uh, no good. But why? Because it's not news. Astros and new babies are not the news? Maybe to the baby, but not to our readers. Then, then, then how's about the twins' birthday? Millions of twins have birthdays. But they don't belong to Mrs. Pellegrino. Look, Basco, I appreciate your effort, but I haven't got the time to explain what makes a news story for us. Oh, wait, here. Look at this morning's paper. Study these headlines. Man hit by truck. Woman takes overdose of sleeping pills. Plane crashes into building. Fire sweeps tenement district. That's an urgent... You got it. Killings, murder, suicide, accidents. That's what the people want to read about, and they want to read about people they know. Yeah, but everybody knows that Clancy the cop, and, and, and he's gone on a vacation. Nothing. The Clancy goes on a vacation, he goes fishing, his boat turns over and he drowns. That's news. Mommy, I better tell the Clancy he should lock himself up in the house. <laughs> Forget about cops' vacations, twins' birthdays, and women having babies. All right, um, I'm going to tell Mrs. Astro to forget about the having a baby. <laughs> hey, goodbye. I, 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 I hope your news of peppers is going to be big success. You know, look, wait a minute. I don't like it myself. I got a wife and kid, and I love nice things. I got a little girl. Last night I was smoking my pipe, and she said, Daddy, are you thinking about something? And I said, yeah, why? And she said, because your face is standing still. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's... That's beautiful. Look, I tell you what. Try again. But forget that stuff about babies, birthdays, and vacations. That's not news. Uh-huh. Well, what's the matter? What you thinking about? I was thinking... Uh, maybe if it was the news, the people would have sleep better. <laughs> Where am, where am I going to find the news? All day, I'm going to walk around. Hey, how did that happen? Nothing is happening. Come on, there's a big crowd outside the bank. Yeah, Mr. Wood, Mr. What's up? What's happening here? Hold up. The car got shot. They don't know if they'll live. What the? Well, aside, everybody. I'm a friend of the news of that. Pesco, I have to hand it to you. This is news. Are you? You like it, huh? I'll say. Janet, they got a check for $10 to Mr. Luigi Basco and bring it in. Ten of that? Yep. I'm very happy to have a freelance reporter like you. Just get around and shoot the news to me. Anything spectacular, exciting, hold-ups, fires. Hold-ups, the fires, the killing, the suicide, the uh, sleep, and uh, the pills. Uh, uh, here's the check, Mr. McGarry. Uh, thanks. Here you are, Mr. Basco. More news, more checks. No, thanks. 
tip of your check, say, is, is it going to be no news? What? You won't take the check? No, I'm... I'm never like to be the fellow who's a bringer of the bad news to somebody. And goodbye, Mr. McGarry, and thanks for your trouble. Well, I'm glad you learned your lesson fast. Well, Mr. Pasquale, don't make me feel bad. It's about a time you found out, Luigi, you can learn the world what to do. Well, I call out a Rosa. Maybe we make some news ourselves, eh? News? What the news? Marriage news. <laughs> Rosa! 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 You called me, Papa! <laughs> <laughs> yes, my little rye crisp. <laughs> Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Luigi just found out he can't teach the world what to do, so... Oh, is it Mr. McGarry? Uh, Mr. Basco, you may not realize it, but I've done a lot of thinking since you left my newspaper office. And Luigi's done a lot of worrying. So have I. Mr. Basco, I want you to take this $10, and it's not for the hold-up story. Is it not? No, that $10 is for a story about a little girl saying to her father, Daddy, your face is standing still. You uh, gave me a good idea, Mr. Basco. I'm starting a feature about cute things children say. I think the public might like it. Oh. Maybe all of me has been standing still. Mr. Basco, starting tomorrow, my paper prints some other kind of news. You, you mean... Yes, the kind that lets you sleep. Now, so long. Oh, goodbye. Mama, Mama Mia, it's wonderful. What's a wonderful? What's a happen? It sounds like a double to talk to me. Pasquale, is, is it true? I'm, I'm can't learn the whole world, but if I learn a one a person at a time, like a Miss Spalding is to say about America, anything can happen. <laughs> And so, um, I mean, I'm not working for the newspaper, but I'm going to have to. So far this week, there was a print, lots of my stories. Parties, babies have been born, vacations. Mamma mia, who would never be nice for the newspapers was to print all the good news in the front of the pages and all the bad news in the back? Then you could enjoy the front of the pages. And with the back of pages, you could line the garbage pail. <laughs> <laughs> you love the son, Luigi Vasco, little immigrant. <laughs> Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you that it's a good idea to carry a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum with you wherever you go. Just slip it into your purse or pocket so that you can enjoy a stick of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint whenever you want it. Chew a stick from time to time to freshen your taste and sweeten your breath. Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint while you're working, shopping, or driving your car. You'll find that little package of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum a friendly companion to carry with you. You really will. So next time you go to the store, get a few packages of healthful, delicious, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Enjoy it often, as millions do. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mac Benoff. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco, with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hunt Con Reed as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, and Sarah Burner as Mrs. Pellegrino. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Charles Lyons. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>